All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Today we're going to cover the Seagull Challenger and perhaps some other bits too. I'm using the cheap Hobby King covering. I've never used it before. It gets mixed reviews, but then so do the usual brands. Right then, okay, if you want to cover a model in anything more than just big blocks of colour, you'll need some templates. In this case, circles and squares. It's a bit easier to see what's going on once they've been cut out. There's a white bit at the front a dark blue arc and the light blue at the back. The templates are made to be an exact fit on the model. I used Pixelmator to make up the templates, but just about any software that allows you to make accurate shapes will work nicely. The process is quite simple. Unroll some of the covering. Avoid the bits of tape they use to hold the roll together. I found it damages the covering if you try and remove it, so it's best just to discard those bits. Pop the template on the covering. You want to make sure you've got the backing side up, then tape it down. To make sure it won't move, tape down all the edges. We want the white to come up around here, so we'll use the hatch as a rough guide. Going to use a new blade, they really don't last long doing this. When they get blunt, the covering tends to bunch up under the blade and tear. Not good. First cut is where we want the front edge. This doesn't need to be too accurate, just as long as there's some excess we can trim off later. The inside of the arc needs to be just inside the line by 5mm or so, and the edges want to be straight and with enough for an overhang. When we get to it, the backing just peels away, leaving a nice clean bit of covering. The light blue is roughly the same. We lay the hatch down and find roughly where we want the blue to come to. Take the hatch away and tape down the template. This time though, the template I've made is just for the front section. The curve wants to be cut just a bit bigger than the template, and the two sides nice and straight. There we go, that's the blue ready. The third part is the dark blue. Again, the template gets taped down. This time, however, it needs to be very carefully cut. It's easier if you roughly cut out the section first so you can manoeuvre it on the cutting board. Both the inside and outside edges need to be nice and smooth. Now we can see how it should all come together. The light blue at the back, the white at the front with a bit of a gap between them, then the dark blue goes over the top. Nice! Right then, let's see how this covering goes. I'll be using this old covering iron. You can see where the coating on the foot's wearing off. Should really get a new one, but you know. <laughs> I've got the temperature set a little bit cooler than I normally would. It's better to have it a bit cool initially rather than burn a hole through the plastic. The first bit is on the front face. As we're using an engine, there will probably be a little bit of oil that finds its way in, just using the off cut from the white piece. First, the backing comes off, keeping in mind which side is which, nothing worse than sticking the iron on the glue side. Since we have that little carbon peg at the front, we need to make a little hole for it. Actually, just a cross cut is all you need to do. Slide it on, make sure there's some covering overlapping all the way around, and start tacking it down. Nice and gingerly at first. Seems to be melting the glue all right. Okay, a bit more iron now. Well, that's shrinking already. As long as we keep the covering pulled tight before heating, it should be quite manageable. Once the edges of the front face are tacked down, you can shrink the face itself. The trick is, if the edges are all stuck and you've pulled the covering really tight first, there shouldn't be all that much shrinking to do. Then, when the model gets left in the sun, the covering will go a bit soft, but it won't wrinkle up. But it takes a bit of practice. The excess gets trimmed away from the top, and the corner gets tidied up with the iron. We don't want it to overlap the top surface, as it will show under the next layer. There we go. Not perfect, but not bad for a first go with a new covering material. Now we know what to expect, the next bit should go a lot easier. The first of the top bits now, I'm going to very lightly fold it in half to get a centre line. Not enough to really crease it. The backing comes off, then we lay it over the wood and line it up on the centre line. Hold it really tight, stretching the covering around the hatch. Then heat it up along the centre, working towards the side, but not quite to the edges. Keep a good 5mm or so away. By now, the covering will be well and truly in position, so we can pull the edges around the corner and tack them down. Pull like your life depends on it, and heat up the covering over the wood. Keep going until the edges are really well stuck down to the corner. The curved bit we want to glue, but not shrink. You can turn the iron temperature down a bit, wait for it to cool, 
but if you're really careful you can get away with fast sweeps of the iron. As long as you can glue it down immediately and you don't hold the iron over, it'll work. It's one of those things you need to practice a bit. <laughs> the other edge gets pulled around like the first and stuck down. Again, to help with any oil, the covering wants to cover up the bottom surface too. Last bit now, the front. We need to trim the excess away, leaving a little extra to fold down. We only need a couple of millimetres. The flat bits at the bottom need to be cut free from the curve and then get stuck down. Now the fun bit. We need to get the overhang to stick down nicely to the front face. This means we need the covering to shrink more the further out it gets. A lot of people would just go and stick it down, but that leaves nasty random overlapping bits. What I tend to do is start with the iron on the corner, starting at maybe 40 degrees, and work my way around gradually making the iron flatter to the surface. The covering that's got nothing under it will tend to shrink a lot. Keep working around and you'll end up with a nice smooth finish. Blue bit now, same principles, actually exactly the same. So rather than repeat myself, I'll just do an edit and well, there we go. Pretty painless, now we can get on with the stripe. The backing comes off, I've already folded it for a centre line, lay it on the hatch and get it perfectly aligned. Because we use templates we know it should fit perfectly. When it's spot on hold the centre down nice and tight and tack it down. Be quick as we only want to melt the glue not shrink the covering. Pull the end tight with it in position and work your way round until you're almost at the end. Again be really quick with the iron, we don't want it to get enough heat to shrink. Just melt the glue. Stick the stripe down on the other side too, then pull it tight around the corner and stick the last little bit. And from the underside stick it down to the bottom surface. It's fairly easy to do, the big things are having the templates and sticking it down to the edges before you shrink the covering. After that it's all down to how much detail you want. Next we'll tackle the fuselage. I'll only show you the steps as the techniques have all pretty much been covered. First up is the firewall. All the corners need to be covered with little strips of covering. This makes sure we don't get any fuel working its way through. The wing slots get the same treatment. Next, we cover the faces, the inside of the wing root, and of course the firewall and cheeks. If you're running electric you could probably skip a lot of this, but it does look a bit neater. Well, I'm getting a bit bored of the white covering, so I cover the top deck in light blue next. This is the side the sheeting cracked up and we had to repair. With the covering on, there's absolutely no indication of what's underneath. Perfect. <laughs> Back to the white covering now. The bottom half of the sides and the bottom of the fuselage. The sides are pretty smooth, not quite perfect, but still well worth the time we put in during the build. The last step was for the dark blue stripe, which makes the fuselage look like this. <laughs> pretty tidy I reckon. The blue stripe is actually a cunning trick. Because the hatch is quite large, there would be a shadow where it sits on the fuselage. If you run a dark stripe with one edge on the join, it will hide it almost completely. Nice. <laughs> okay, throttle. If you're running an engine, you'll need to be a bit creative as some engines have a front carb, some rear, some have plastic arms, some metal. For this OS52 though, we can do a fairly simple install with some golden cable from Sullivan. I say simple, but what I'm actually going to show you works, but I ended up changing it a little later. Anyway, first pass. I've marked the firewall close to the engine mount that lines up with the end of the hole in the arm. Actually, just above to account for the arm swing. Using a bit of piano wire with a flat ground into the end, I've drilled a hole through the firewall with a bit of a downwards angle to get the sleeving going in the right direction. Like so. I'm going to fit a quick link to the throttle arm to give it a bit more offset to the side to clear the engine mount. On the old OS carbs, the arm is held on with a single screw, so it's easier to remove it than try and drill it and fit the quick link with it on the engine. The arm was drilled to fit the quick link, then it gets popped through, a washer goes on, then a tiny bit of Loctite, being careful not to let it stick the whole lot together. Nut goes on, done up so it doesn't quite cause any binding. Once the Loctite sets it will stay put nicely. If it was under a cowl you'd probably want to use two nuts and lock them together as the extra heat might cause you some problems. Might as well refit the arm while it dries. Right, the sleeve needs to make its way to the servo which takes it past one of the formers. 
we don't want a tank to pinch it and we need a few hard points to stop it from flexing. The easiest thing to do is go through the former. Make a hole. I'm using the same piano wire. Not worrying too much about the angle as we can open up the hole a bit and drop some thick sino on to keep it in place once the cable goes in. Speaking of the cable, the Loctite should be well and truly set by now so we can run the cable through for a test. Now, the cable is too small for the grub screw in the quick link to grab and we don't really want to damage the cable with the grub screw anyway. The easiest workaround is to use a short bit of the sleeve to pad out the cable. Then do up the grub screw nice and tight over the sleeving. It will pinch the soft sleeve into the cable and the grub will only mash the sleeve. Works a treat, but before flying it will need a bit of Loctite as well. Right, a quick test, just pushing the cable. And that looks pretty good to me, quite free moving, nice. The servo I've used comes with a round type arm fitted, but they also come with single ended adjustable arms, which is ideal for the throttle. I fit another quick link to the end hole, just the same as the throttle arm, with the arm fitted to the servo in approximately the mid throttle position. Normally roughly 90 degrees to the cable sleeve is a good place to start. Cut the sleeve so there's some clearance and run the cable through the quick link with a bit of sleeve for padding. Connect up a servo tester or hook up your radio and see what happens. With a little tinkering you should find a full throw of the servo will move freely and at the end of the travel fully open and close the carb. With the adjustable servo arm you should be able to get the range pretty close just by adjusting the length and doing fine adjustments with the throttle endpoints. If you end up with the endpoints more than a couple of percent off 100, the mechanical setup is not correct. Now, this install works, but it's not ideal. There's a fair bit of cable flex in the fuselage, so some more hard points would be good. If we were to go through in the order of assembly, we'd be onto the tail feathers now, but I think I'll quietly change the order. <laughs> so here's the final install. You can see the extra hard point towards the front. It stops the cable from flexing, making it far more positive in response. Next to the servo, I've reinforced the fuselage side with some balsa and added an angled hard point right at the end of the sleeve. This adds up to a really solid linkage. You can't really see it here, but I've also moved the cable exit through the firewall. Actually, tell you what, I'll record an extra little clip. Good excuse to go outside. <laughs> As the carb opens and closes, the barrel also moves in and out. So, to get the wire a bit more central, it now runs through the engine mount. The hole is only 2mm, so I'm not too worried about any loss of strength. Well, that'll have to do for this video. We've got quite a bit done, I think. Next time, we'll look at fitting the tail feathers, plumbing the fuel tank, and maybe get onto the wings. We'll have to see how it goes. So yeah, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, and if you're not already, do please subscribe. Bye guys. <laughs>